Hello and welcome. I asked ChatGPT for an algorithmic trading strategy and I backtested it in Python. So in this video, we are going over the ChatGPT recommendation, build the backtest in Python together, and of course, we are also going over the results in the end. So as you see, I asked which algorithmic trading strategy would you recommend to me? I also said, just provide me the very specific trading strategy I have to trade. It told me to use the mean reversion strategy using Bollinger Bands and the RSI. So buy when asset price touches the lower Bollinger Band and the RSI is below 30. Sell when the price hits the upper Bollinger Band and the RSI is above 70. So a very specific trading strategy actually. Then I asked well on which asset and which time frame because it wasn't provided here. And then it told me to use a liquid asset such as Euro US dollar, use a one hour time frame, And then I just told ChatGPT that I don't want to trade Forex. So it just <laughs> recommended me to trade stocks then with the exact same strategy. And then I asked if it's also possible for Bitcoin. <laughs> And it told me, yeah, go ahead, waste your money. I'm just kidding. Or maybe I don't. We will find out now. All right, let's get started coding our backtest. We need some libraries, pandas for data handling. We need the Python Binance library. In specific, we need the client. That makes historical data polls very convenient. Then I'm using TA to calculate the technical indicators, namely Bollinger Bands and RSI. And I'm also instantiating the client here. Then I am going to copy paste a function from my other screen, which is a function I've covered in a lot of my older videos. And this function is straightforward. It is just pulling K-line or candlestick data for a given symbol and a given time interval. So this function, which is taking a certain symbol and a starting horizon, so simply a point in time in the past where you want to pull data from, and then this will return you open, high, low, close volume data. So let's quickly go over it step by step. So this is using the client, which we have instantiated here, and then pulls the K-line data, so historical K-line data for the given symbol, let's say Bitcoin, for a given time interval, so in this case one hour, because ChatGPT told us to take a one hour interval and goes from a certain starting point and time on. This is just slicing some unnecessary data, so in specific it is just taking the first six columns here, which are containing the time, open, high, low, close, volume data. And as these columns are initially just integer values, I'm just naming them here, then set the index of that data frame to the time value, and then set the index to a human readable uh, timestamp, because initially from the API it's coming as a Unix timestamp, so this is just uh, making it better readable for you, and then it is converting all the values, so meaning open, high, low, close volume data, to floating values, so we can calculate with them. So I'm going to show you how this is working. If I pull that, or if I'm calling that function get data for the Bitcoin in relation to the US dollar or US dollar theta, the stable coin equivalent. And I'm going to start in the beginning of this year. So 2023, first January. I will get a data frame containing open, high, low, close volume columns and one hour granular rows here. So you see it starts at zero o'clock and then one, two, three, and so on. So we actually have a lot of data here, 8.2K rows, where a lot of data depends on your viewpoint. So let's store that somewhere. Let's just store that in a variable, which I'm calling df here. Now, first of all, We want to calculate the technical indicators we need to build that strategy. So DF now needs to have a RSI value. And to calculate the RSI value, we're just adding a column here, RSI. 
use the TA library, which we have imported, access the momentum functions and then the RSI, and we are calculating that on the close. With that, we have our RSI value. Standard window is 14 timestamps here. Next, we need the Bollinger Bands. We only need the lower and the higher band for our strategy. So I'm just creating same logic here, a new column, Bollinger Band, low, using TA's library again, then the volatility functions, and then the Bollinger lower band on the close again. There's also taking standard parameters here. Same story for the higher band. So just using the H band here and then story is the exact same. So we have our columns here, RSI, B, B, L, sounds a bit, I don't know, strange. And then we have BBH. Okay. So, I mean, we can also drop all the NAN values here, drop NA in place true, and then we are getting rid of those values. They are simply created because you have rolling calculations here and you don't get values for the first uh, N rows here dependent on the calculation. So data frame looks like this now. All right, one thing we have to do to that data frame be before we are um, we're actually coding the back test, so we have to take care of the price we are buying the coin for. So let's say we are getting some signal in, let's just take this first row here. If we are getting a signal on this row, it those, those calculations here contain information from this row here. So we calculate that on the close column, for instance, so the RSI and also the Bollinger Bands, so this information is included in that row, meaning we cannot buy the asset on that price. That's not possible because we don't have the information yet. The only point in time which we can buy for is on the next candles open here. So we can buy for this price because once we're getting this information, we can uh, um, enter the trade and then buy on this open. So what I'm going to do is I simply shift this open column one row back. So I'm getting the buy price if I get a signal in a certain row in the same row. So I'm just, just going to call that price because this is the price I either buy or sell for. And then I take the open and shift it one row back. So I have a price column now. So. This is just the next candles open here. All right, this is our data frame. And now we are just coding the strategy within a loop. So we are looping over this data frame and check for the buying and selling conditions. All right. So just as a, as a, as a recap or as a, a reminder here. So we are buying when the asset, asset's price, so the close, touches the lower volume brand and the RSI is below 30. So these were the conditions for the buying, for buying the asset. And we are selling when the price hits the upper band and the RSI is above 70, all right? Okay, now I usually code the strategy using returns. I want to do it with absolute capital now, in, in um, this time. Before doing that, I want to use a position flag. So we're just keeping track of if I'm currently in a position, right? So this value always changes when you're buying the asset. So whenever I get the first buying signal, this position flag switches to true. So initially, I'm going to call that in position. I'm setting that to false because initially we are not in a position. Then I want to have, let's call that equity curve. This is containing the value of my portfolio. All right. So here I'm storing my, uh, my capital gains and also my capital losses here. And then I want to assume I have 1K capital. And the assumption for this backtest is 
that I'm always, I'm always investing 100% of my capital. This backtest also takes care of when I'm losing money. So let's say I lose money on my first trade. Let's say I make uh, $100 loss here. Then I will only invest $900 on the next trade. If I win, I will invest more on the next trade and so on, right? So this is a, a method you can use. You can also say, I wanna keep the amount fixed and I don't wanna invest my capital gains. The only thing which is not working is that you keep it fixed and then you're losing money, right? Because it means you have endless capital here. So we, to keep it simple, we are just investing all capital which is left, all right? And now we are looping. So we are just using a simple loop. So for index row in DF iter rows, and then we are starting the condition check. So first condition is when we are not in a position. So we are, if not in position, which is initially the case, if we are not in a position and our RSI value is below 30. And also the close is below the lower Bollinger Band. Then we are buying. So our buy price would be my price value because I'm buying on the next candles open here. How much can I buy? So how many coins do I buy? That is my capital, which I have. So capital divided by the price. So how many coins do I get for my capital? And when I have it, I set my position flag to two because now I'm in a position and I exactly know how many coins I bought. Now I need my selling condition. If I'm in a position now, if in position, and, and now my selling conditions are simply RSI is above 70 and the close is above the higher Bollinger Band. Then I have my sell price and my sell price again is simply my next candles open. And then my capital is changing. My capital now is the coins I have in my portfolio now, which I calculated here. So my coins times the price I'm selling for, sell price. Makes sense, right? You're buying some coins for some capital and then you are selling those coins and what you're getting is the amount of coins you have times the price you're getting for them. And this is your new capital, assuming you are just buying for the remaining capital you have. Next, we just wanna add to our equity curve and we are just appending the capital so we know uh, how much capital we have after each trade. And then we are setting the position flag to false as we are not in a position anymore once we sold. All right. And that's already it for the strategy. So if I'm executing that, then I can access my equity curve on the one hand. So this is showing the capital uh, development here. So we can transform that to a series. Maybe it's a bit more um, or more convenient to, to handle here. So you see the equity curve is going like this. So pretty bad in the, in the start, but then is having a decent development in absolute terms here, right? So I didn't check the relative performance yet. So to check the relative performance, you're just taking the capital in the end and divide that by your initial capital. So in this case, we can take a look at the capital in the end, which is 113244, and then divide it by our initial capital. So we would have made yeah, 
13.26% here, right? You might say, okay, nice. So ChatGPT recommended me a trading strategy which worked, right? But you didn't account for that the Bitcoin was having a blast this year, right? So it made way more than 13 dot something percent here, right? So this one, which has like, I think, let's check that X trades here. So 28 trades. This made uh, uh, 13 something percent. Yeah, but the Bitcoin over the whole year made, we can actually check that. You just take the close and divide that. Close and divide it by the first price. And then you will get a return of 163%. Which is distinctly more, but you also have to account for that you a holding or you would have hold the Bitcoin all year long, right? So with those trades, you wouldn't be as much exposed to the market as you would have been if you would hold the Bitcoin that you have, have to also take into consideration. But anyhow, mm, that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. By the way, I um, <laughs> told ChatGPT that I backtested it and it was providing me not that convincing results and it recommended me another uh, trading strategy. So yeah, if you like this video, if you like the concept of this video, we can uh, maybe get on the nerves of ChatGPT a bit more and challenge it. So yeah, provide me some feedback. Thank you very much for watching and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the upcoming videos. Bye-bye.